It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Hey, good morning and welcome to the Thursday Travel and Cruise Industry News Podcast. On this, the 14th day of December 2023, coming to you from a very nippy Bedford County, Virginia. It was uh, 25 degrees when I got up this morning going to get up to, you know, 50s today, and then we got a heat wave coming by the weekend. It's going to rain, but uh, it'll be up in the 60s one day, it said. I'd rather have that than 20s, I'll tell you that one. All right, uh, got some headlines today. A cargo ship capsizes. Port Canaveral adds charging stations. We got a local strike forcing an embarkation change. Thank goodness a residential line finally acquires a ship. Norwegian introduces new itineraries for 2025 and 6. Crown Princess delays. An icon of the seas reveals its godfather. That and a lot more. Here at 11 o'clock this morning. Of course, if you're listening via the podcast, always welcome. You can access the podcast via my blog, which is accessadventure.net, or wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, just search for Travel and Cruise Industry News, and up pops the fat travel guy. Anytime you're listening via the podcast and want to jump over to the video feed, there's always a uh, link in the description, <clears throat> so you can do just that. All right, guys, today is National Boulevards Day. I can deal with boulevards. I like fish stew. That's basically what it is, fish stew. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that one. Anyway, I wouldn't mind having some today. Cold, just cold enough for it. All right, those of you that watch all the time know that yesterday uh, 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 Pittsburgh Jason was trying to get Hot Air Tom to uh, do a live stream from out there in the river uh, on a, an excursion. He was on on Monkey River. Well, they didn't have any uh, kind of... Uh, of Wi-Fi out there in the jungles, but uh, Tom was able to take some pictures. Uh, that's the boat that he was getting on, and that's it uh, from the inside with his fellow uh, monkey uh, fingers. And there you go, hot air Tom out in the water. Now, we also have some clips in this, too. Uh, that's Hot Air Tom looking back down uh, Monkey River, yes. That's going out, I guess, through the mangroves. Must have just been a stop sign. Uh, okay, so then hot air, Tom. Uh, let's see. Now, you know, he promised not to try to steal any monkeys on Monkey River. He made no such promise on the birds. Uh, so he, he tried to catch uh, an egret and failed miserably, thank goodness. 
And then he tried to catch a, a, a lizard. See the lizard there on the limb? Yeah, I know. Don't tell me that, folks. I know. It's an iguana. I'm just go along with the narrative of giving hot air Tom hell. And then on his way back, cold. It started raining. And that would be hot air Tom all bundled up in his little rain gear there. So he didn't get his little uh, thinning hair on top cold. And then, uh, of course, it was uh, looking back at the boat. That's Hot Air Tom and the joy, <laughs> and as always. I appreciate Hot Air Tom sending stuff, even if I do uh, give him a hard time. All right. The top story today has to deal with a capsized uh, cargo ship. The Carnival Vista assisted and rescued six individuals stranded at sea close to the D Dominican Republic after their cargo vessel overturned Tuesday night. Carnival Vista was sailing to Amber Cove in the Dominican Republic when the incident occurred. Carnival said in a news brief, Carnival Vista's officers under the direction of Captain Paolo Severini immediately altered the ship's course in coordination with Carnival's Fleet Operations Center in Miami when an onboard monitoring system received an emergency alert. The ship's officers then spotted six men on a life raft and stopped to rescue them and bring them on board. After informing the Dominican Republic Coast Guard about the remaining six unaccounted for crew members, a search operation was initiated Carnival Vista was then advised to resume its original course. The U.S. Coast Guard was able to find and rescue the remaining six sailors. So in total, 12 were rescued. Details on how or why the ship capsized were not released. This is the second cargo ship uh, rescue in recent months. So... Congratulations to uh, all three entities there, the Carnival Vista, the uh, uh, Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard, and the Dominican Republic Coast Guard. So they all got involved. All right. I'll be back with a couple more news stories after a quick break from one of our network sponsors. The next story today comes out of Port Canaveral. And uh, let's see, where are we? That's not what I wanted, folks. I'm not in the right place, am I? Port Canaveral. There we go. Okay. The uh, Port Canaveral has announced a significant facility upgrade that will greatly benefit electric vehicle owners. In a collaborative effort with Florida Power and Light, Port Canaveral is set to introduce six new FPL Evolution Level 3 fast charging stations. The state-of-the-art charging stations, which will be located in the Cove District parking lot, are designed to provide a swift and efficient charging experience and take away the fear that guests will not be able to charge their vehicles 
post crews near the Port Canaveral parking areas. All right. Guest sailing on the MSC cruises, MSC Arabia, uh, yesterday have been notified of a last minute embarkation change due to a local strike that will close La Havre cruise port. Uh, instead, the ship will depart not from France as originally planned, but from Belgium and Bruges. I can't pronounce those words. The cruise line is providing transportation to the new embarkation port if needed at no charge. There appears to be no other adjustment to the ship's itinerary. I think I might have said that wrong, folks. They were notified yesterday they were supposed to sail today from France instead of sailing today from Belgium. Okay. That's a little better. Villa V Odyssey. How's that for a name? Villa V Residences has announced acquiring the Braemar from Fred Olson Cruise Lines. Braemar will now be transformed into Villa V Odyssey, a residential cruise ship offering villa style living on the high seas. Villa V Residences is making all-inclusive living at sea an affordable reality at $89 a day, which covers rent, utilities, food, travel, and entertainment, significantly less than what it costs to live in various cities worldwide. This is why Villa V hopes to attract digital nomads, those people who can work from anywhere in the world. The ship will have a fully equipped business center private offices, and reliable internet access provided by Starlink and Viasat 3. Villa V Odyssey will embark on a continual rural cruise on May the 15th from Southampton in the UK. Plans to span 425 ports across 147 countries over 1,301 days with port stays ranging from two to seven days. From Southampton, the ship will sail to various European ports before making her way to Canada, the U.S., and the Caribbean. Following her fall season in the Caribbean, by February 2025, Villa V Odyssey will sail to Antarctica, followed by calls to Brazil, Panama, Mexico, Hawaii, and Alaska, and making her way to Australia and New Zealand via Japan, the Philippines, and the Pacific Islands. Villa V Odyssey is scheduled to complete her circumnavigation and return to Europe by June of 2027. I, I do that, folks. At $89 a day? I mean, that's getting where you can afford to do it. So, I mean, it will depend on what all that includes. All right, the next story today, guys, comes from NCL. Some new itineraries for 2025 and 2026. Of course, this is for Hot Air Tom. Highlights include Norwegian Sun's inaugural season in Asia with first-time visits to Kyoto. Uh, that's in Japan, of course. Uh Jeju Island and Incheon, South Korea, along with the debut of Norwegian Viva Home Parton in Galveston, Texas, for its Caribbean adventures, including a first-time stop in the Cayman Islands. Norwegian Escape is also set to launch in New Orleans and includes new destinations such as Puerto Limon, Cologne, and Cartagena. Norwegian Jade is also set to introduce New ports of uh, Asajutia, that's in El Salvador, Huatulco, and Manzanillo in Mexico, and Caleo in Peru. Norwegian Sky will be based 
in La Romana in the Dominican Republic will provide a range of seven to 12 day Southern Caribbean cruises featuring a new stop in Cabo Ro, Dominican Republic. Norwegian Jade will run 11 to 17 day itineraries with various embarkation and disembarkation points, including Miami, New York, Tampa, and Kaleo, Peru. A highlight 17-day voyage from Kaleo will visit the west coast of South and Central America with new stops in El Salvador and Mexico. For Australia and New Zealand explorers, Norwegian Spirit will offer open jaw sailings between Sydney and Auckland, from uh, including voyages through New Zealand fjords. In Africa, Norwegian Dawn will be offering various sailings featuring embarkation ports in Cape Town, Port Louis, and Doha, among others, including four 12-day trips with unique stops in Asaranya and Nosy B, Madagascar. The South American journey on Norwegian Star begins with a transatlantic crossing from Lisbon to Rio in November of 2025, followed by a 17-day cruise to ports in Argentina, Uruguay, and Chile. I, Norwegians, uh, as much as I fuss at them about their pricing, you know, they do good things for solos, except on pricing. They still try to get you for 100% uh, quite often uh, add-on. But they got some nice itineraries uh, that they're, they're changing up. All right, the next story comes out of San Francisco. Passengers aboard Crown Princess expressed frustration and disappointment due to extended delays before embarking on the journey from San Francisco to Mexico. The ship eventually departed early Wednesday, that was yesterday, but prior to that, passengers took to social media to convey their discontent with the cruise line's handling of the scheduled delay. The initial de delay was anticipated by passengers as Princess Cruises received notification from San Francisco port officials regarding increased silt accumulation near the designated cruise berth. This accumulation, combined with unusually low tidal levels in San Francisco Bay, resulted in insufficient uh, keel clearance for the ship to dock and embark at the original scheduled time on Tuesday. Guests were informed of the situation through email notifications and received a letter explaining the circumstances upon arrival at the terminal. While passengers had prepared for the initial delay, they were taken aback when the departure was further postponed. Crown Princess eventually left San Francisco at 1.15 a.m., five hours later than the original delay time. As compensation for the inconvenience, 25 bucks. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Crown Prince's current cruise is 10 day round trip to the Mexican Riviera. All right, this is the final story today, folks. Royal Caribbean International has revealed that iconic soccer player Lionel Messi will name their newest, biggest ever ship, Icon of the Seas, as both the ship and the player have broken many records and set new standards of excellence. The pairing is a great choice for the new ship's naming and ushering in a completely new era of cruising. Not only is Messi the greatest ever to play the game, uh, as far as the soccer world goes, has a long list of records throughout his stellar career. He's also been named Times 2023 Athlete of the Year and has won the prestige, 
prestigious Balloon Door Award, the most valuable individual award in professional soccer. Eight times. The first one, he was 22 years old. Just a babe in arms. All right. Lionel Messi is going to be godfather to Icon of the Seas. I'm not a huge soccer fan, but that's a that's a pretty big name. All right, that's going to wrap up the news portion of today. So let's go see who's fussing at me in the chat room and if I screwed anything up today. I don't think I did for once. That would be shocking. Mike's with us. Hi, Mike. Otter Tom's here. Hello from Rotan. Boarding a boat to see Sloss. Oh, you're going on a boat to see Sloss. Last time I was in Rotan, I just had to go up the road to see Sloss. There's Pittsburgh Jason. How was the monkey cruise, hot air? There's Gretchen. She's up in Ohio. Stream is lagging a bit. Sorry about that. That might be weather related. Dennis is with us. Amy's here. Hi, Amy. I'll have to show Tom how to buy a SIM card. Yeah, that would that would help. Uh, Steve's with us out in Kentucky. Hi, Steve. Did you see the uh, TikTok of the lady that missed her ship by 20 minutes? There's no context at all. Yeah. Um, they flew in the day of the cruise. Let's see. This there was that one sailed out of uh, Los Angeles, I think, um, and they're from someplace in Arizona. They flew in on the morning of the cruise, and the flight was delayed. So when they finally got in and got to transfer to the dock, they got to the dock uh, just as the ship was pulling away. Uh, and that that points out two problems, folks. One, it, you're running a risk anytime you fly in the day of a cruise. A number of people on social media pointed that out to this poor lady. I feel bad for them. But the ships are, uh, you know, they're pretty stringent about the sail away times. Number one, because there's other ships are involved in the sail away of when they can leave too. So, oh, especially the bigger uh, piers with multiple ships. I mean, it's like a, a, a dance. So the other thing is one of the benefits of uh, booking air through the cruise lines. And a lot of people don't like to do that. They don't like the pricing. They, I mean, you know, I hate to fly, so I'm not saying you should do this. But if you do book through the airlines and book through the cruise lines, that wouldn't have happened. They would either have waited for you because they would have known that you were late getting in. Or they would have gotten you to the next port to get on the ship. So, I mean, it just goes to show that uh, go a day ahead. And I know there's times that I haven't done that as well. And it always, it's never happened to me, but it's always running a major risk, especially in LA to get from LAX to the, to the cruise port, if that's what it was, you got all that traffic on the expressway sometimes that's just awful. I don't remember five, I don't remember the roads that you have to go to get there because I've never driven it. I've been, you know, on a, on a transfer. Uh, Cindy's with us. Anyway, that's uh, Jason. Um, that's the story behind that. 
uh, Cindy is with us. Hi, Cindy. How does a cargo ship capsize? That's crazy. I'm only assuming it was in some really rough waters. Uh, and you, maybe it was improperly loaded. I, I don't know. Who knows with the kind of weight they carry. It also didn't say if everything sunk or if it just tilted over. I, I can't, I don't have any further information on the story, Jason. Uh, we can do a live stream today. I have a signal. And, uh, I'll have to see if I've got any time. I've got a pretty full schedule uh, with the uh, uh, schedule phone calls this afternoon too. Um, maybe I'll try to get a hold of you out there. Update on the fourth February four wheel back to back MSC Mazavilla from New York City. Uh, fares have greatly increased, but now save even more by moving departure to February twenty fifth to 23rd March for only 1350 bucks for four weeks. The cruise is four weeks for $1,300? Is that what you're saying, Dennis? Holy cow. Let's go, Tom. We're ready. Okay. I'll have to work on that, Jason. We are ready. This is four week. There's Emily. She says, hey, Chilean gang. Jason's here. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well, Em. I got, I got the same time off work, so now I'm here more. Ah, very good. There's Sonny down in Mississippi. Jason, let Chili know the link so he can post it on the community announcement on here. Yeah, Hot Air Tom's going to send us the link. No, I got to send Hot Air Tom the link. I'll get that right. That's right. <laughs> um, Sonny says, love the sloths. I like sloths, too. I've played with sloths a couple times. Jason says, I saw sloths in Costa Rica. All they did was sleep, didn't move at all. Well, then if they move, you have trouble seeing them moving because they're very slow. But they do move a little bit. Costa Rica. Uh, Tom, please take pics of you and the sloth. Yeah, that would be good. And often it's cheaper to book a solo stateroom than a solo studio on NCL. Yeah, it is quite often. They, they it's one of the things I fuss with them about constantly. But yeah, you gotta, you have to shop it uh, in dealing with NCL. That's for sure. Norwegian prices are a scam unless you're Tom. Well, that's true. But Tom's sailed with them four thousand times. He, he's past Emerald or whatever the top level is, I think. Um, Cristiano was more expensive than Messi. Football. Yeah, that's football. We call it soccer. And I know everybody in the world calls it football. Kenneth Willis up in Pennsylvania. I can Dan told the story also of that lady. I fly in day of every time, never missed a ship. Was close one time in New Orleans. Though so I've flown in day of a couple times too, but it's got to be, you know, I've got to get an early, early, early flight. And it's got to land at the destination by no later than like nine o'clock. So I've got plenty of time. 
and I don't like to do it. Um, even even driving, I, I've been usually getting into port the night before. So I haven't determined yet. That's one of the things I was planning on doing today uh, is planning out January to see how I'm going to travel. If I'm going to fly or drive back to Port, uh, Port Canaveral. When are you sending? Yeah, $1,350 for four weeks, four back-to-back -back cruises from Brooklyn to Port Canaveral, Ocean Key, and Nassau. Yeah, that's a nice cruise. I mean, I'm, and I, I love the ship, except accessibility sucks. So that was the only thing I had against the Mesa Villa was accessible issues. What cabin? No, Dennis is just telling us about it. I don't think Dennis is going on it. Uh, morning, all. M for MSC, probably an inside stateroom base fare. Yeah, that's usually what the best fare is. Don meant to write Don. Did a vlog of the lady who missed her ship. He got the details. Don who? Yeah, that's our Canadian friend. So, uh, all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Um, I'll see if I can get a hold of Hot Air Tom, uh, if he's going to have a, a signal in the sloth area. Uh, so we'll see. All right, guys, that's going to wrap me up for today. I'll be back for Friday Travel and Cruise Industry News tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Don't forget, smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I think we're at um, 30, uh, 48.68, I think it was this morning. So heading toward 4,900 in the next day or two. So, all right, that's going to be, uh, that's it for today. Uh, as always, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. Think about cruising. Hopefully one day soon, we'll all get together on the high seas. Have a fabulous day, everybody. See you tomorrow. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.